we will kind of go back a little less on the tax increases if you all will agree not to do so much cutting of the spending. I think it's just, it's just sad that we don't look more carefully at all of these agencies and the areas that we can cut before we look at raising taxes. And that's as simple as, you Do you know, think in be. the interim that'll happen before next year, before next January rolls around? I mean, when is this, who's, who's going to be doing the Senator Duran, if it is in the legislature, who's going to re say, it's time, I know a number it's of time. your colleagues are saying, it's time that we look at efficiencies. I think that in the, in the interim, time. I think it will be looked at. In the interim, we do have, I serve on the Revenue Stabilization Tax Policy Committee, and I know that we've talked about looking at all of the tax, um, all of the, not just the tax credits, but the tax uh, incentives that they're proposing. We've also looked at, at combining and consolidating those agencies that are just redundant agencies where we have, we have people in one agency doing the same thing as the other. They oh. could be combined and we could eliminate some of those FTEs or, or employment positions that are being filled by those agencies. So I think during the interim, we will see a lot of the committees looking at where can we have a little more efficiency in government? And, and so, so tax we stabilization, your committee does that. We had that. talked about doing that as far as the tax. And now, of course, LFC, which deals with the budget itself, they have also said that they were going to look at some of those things. Um, but we really need to look at, we need to consolidate agencies. We need to look at those people who were the exempt employees that were hired within the last year of the governor's, this last year of his term, that were hired and, and put into these positions with $100,000 a year salaries plus benefits. Those things, when we have out, we have just, just expanded the positions that are out there now, we've got to look at how we can stop all of this. You know, I know that we talked a lot about the exempts and how some of those exempt employees are now classified. Here we go again. Well, That's you know, during, the, during the special expense. session back in October, I know the Senate, I think, was brought up by State Senator John Ryan, mm -hmm. did pass right. cutting the governor's exempt. Well, he vetoed that and said, oh, I'll just do it on myself, by myself with executive order. Still, to this day, we can't get the names of the positions that he says he has eliminated. That's How right. How can that be? And he said he, and the, the amount in Senator Ryan's bill, I think, was over 100 that he was eliminating. The governor in his executive order said 59. And to the, you're right. To this day, many of us have asked, where are those 59 employees? Many of them, as you heard, were moved from exempt positions to classified positions, which is what I'm saying is now it's a recurring expense in state government. That's Instead an Instead of point. eliminating what we've done now, if we've increased again the number of employees in, the, in that department, but now it's a recurring expense, not exempt anymore, Meaning that person, they might have been meaning, gone with his administration. Yes, yes, be gone yes. Gone in, in eight months, but exactly. instead, they're going to be on now. Their classified position. They cannot be removed without cause. They have to be removed for cause, which means that those people are a recurring expense now to state government, year after year after year from now on, rather than being exempt. Until so they that retire was, at twenty-eight years, and then they get eighty percent of their right, salary. Right. And then, what it, about the double <laughs> dipping? What about and, not, what about the double dipping? The double dipping is that, still these going have hit on. The nerve, these exempts and the double dipping That's exactly have hit right. the nerve. Tell me what the situation is with double dipping. Well, the dippers. double dipping and, and the, bad, the worst thing about is. this, the double dippers are the ones, dippers, <laughs> are the double dippers are the ones who retire from state, county, or city government, basically in any, any area of government, and then the very next day or within the next month, they're hired back into the same position they held before, many times receiving a higher salary than what they were receiving when they were before they retired, plus their retirement. So they're drawing their retirement, which is huge. Like 80% like like or 85%. 80 of their highest three-year average is the way it works. So it's practically their whole salary again. That's right. Plus another salary. Another salary. Two, two salaries. And that's doing a couple of things. What it's doing is it's keeping someone else from even applying for that position who might be paying into the retirement fund when they come back after they've retired and they're and they're getting paid again, they don't. The other the other kicker is they don't have to pay into the retirement fund. The state has so to pay their drawing, share. So they're drawing. The state is paying their share and the state share. They're drawing the retirement, not paying in, keeping someone else from getting that position. And we have thousands of the, well, the last count supposedly was a thousand five hundred or so of those of those double dippers. Now, in addition to that. 
they've found a way around things without having some of